What's going on guys, Josh Pocock here. Now, just a few days ago, we covered a tool called Kestra, a low code automation platform alternative to tools like make.com, N8N, Zapier. We've covered N8N multiple times on this channel. I personally love N8N over trigger.dev, a bunch of different no code or low code automation solutions. Now in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at another one called Active Pieces, an automation software that's AI first, no code and open source. I'm going to walk you through step by step how you can host it locally using Docker. And I'm even going to show you how you can easily get it set up on Coolify self-hosted on a VPS within the next five minutes. Let's dive right into it. All right, guys, so just before we dive into active pieces, I just want to say a couple things just so you guys kind of have a clear mindset of where I personally think these tools strengths and weaknesses are because anytime I do some of these videos I get a lot of questions because there are so many different options between NAN, make.com, Zapier, etc. So personally I just really wouldn't recommend Zapier unless you know maybe you already have everything set up on there you're going to be spending the most it's not open source etc. Make.com can be good it's not open source but you know um, I use make.com for a while but personally I really like NAN. I know a lot of you really like NAN. I'm probably never going to stop using n8n just because it's really good um you can do a lot of cool stuff some pretty advanced stuff it has really good ai integrations and it's no to low code and then kestra is something that i'm still starting to use and i think it's really really cool i'm excited for that tool if you haven't seen my video on this check this one out as well and now let's dive into this new one active pieces all right so here's a little preview of what the builder looks like we can see the builder right here we can see it has conditions like so so you can do if true do this if false do this it has loops it has different languages you can code with ai which is pretty cool so you could like uh type in a prompt right here uh web hooks http code auto retry versioning white labeling uh, hide pieces custom templates now some of those free search i just went over would probably apply more to the cloud product right here we're not going to look at the cloud product we're going to look at the self-hosted version all right so a link to the github as well as every other link that we talk about in this video will be in the description down below um active pieces is built on typescript as you can see here and you can go check out the github you can also read through some of the documentation if you want you know if you really want to dive in deep i'm going to go over some of the basics in today's video as well showing you how to get it set up so first things first let's get it set up locally so as you can see here if we go to docker this is going to be the one that you're going to use uh, locally so you're going to want to have git installed as well as docker installed these are the prerequisites so just simply go here to the docs and download Git and Docker if you don't have it already. Make sure you have Docker open and running on your system. Okay, so I'll explain to you the way I personally installed this. Um, I first ran this. Now, I don't know if you need to run this or if you can just go and do the next step, which I'll show you in just a second. But uh, let's I'll just show you exactly what I did. So you simply just run this command right here. This is going to pull the image and run Docker image. So you run that in your terminal. All right, so I'm not going to run this because I already have ran it, but you would just simply run that command. Okay, so since if you're running it locally, you're not going to have it connected to a domain like, you know, um, active pieces dot your domain or whatever you're using for the subdomain dot com. So what you're going to want to do is install ngrok. So you can search up ngrok, install that. Now, this this part, like I said, it's not mandatory if you don't want to use webhooks, but um, if you're actually going to be using this a, de a little bit, you know, you're going to want to have webhooks most likely. But either way, if you're using it on a day-to-day -day basis, I would recommend the Coolify method, which I'm going to show you in just a second regardless. So go ahead. You want to install ngrok and then run ngrok HTTP 8080. Okay, once you run that, it's going to give you this forwarding URL right here. So as you can see in this image, you're going to copy that URL and you're going to replace that with the URL, which is right here. So you're going to copy this right here. So if I paste it over into my notepad, we can see that it's currently pointing the AP front end URL at localhost 8080. You would want to replace that with the ngrok URL that you got. Now, since you actually just ran this, which like I said, I don't even know if you necessarily needed to or not, um, but that's how I did it. So either way, you may have to stop the Docker containers first before you run this, um, but you could try to run this first. If you get an issue saying the port's already in use, then just stop the old ones and then run this command again. And then it will start it up and you can simply go to localhost port 8080 on your 
um, browser and you will actually get active pieces load up. So once you first load it up, it's going to ask you to create an account so you can do that. And then you'll have access to the platform. Okay, so I'll go over some of the basics here. So we got flows on the left hand side. We got runs over here. So this is where you'll see all your runs, the status, the start time, the duration. We can see issues. Now, some of these things you won't be able to have access to just on the open source plan, which does kind of suck. Um, connections. So we got connections here. You can add new connections, active campaign, air table, AI table, Anthropic Claude, all the different, you know, integrations you can pretty much think of. There's over 200 plus different pieces, they call them. We got Gmail, Google Gemini. If I click here, we can see Google. We could connect. It's going to open up that right there. All right, so that is connections. Then over here, we have settings. So you can change your project's name right here. Um, we can see we're in Josh's project. We can go to appearance. Of course, you are going to want to put on dark mode. Change the language right here. Team, you won't have access to this feature. Pieces, this is your pieces right here. You could install additional pieces right here of custom pieces. So there is um, ways like that you can install custom pieces from the community or even create your own piece. And then get sync, which you won't have access to. All right, up here, you can invite users. So you could type in the email here invite to entire platform, uh, platform role admin, and then invite. You will also get an invitation link that you could send people. Um, platform admin up here. So if you click on platform admin, you'll see overview, which we don't have. So this is unlock analytics. So it's kind of annoying that some of these aren't uh, available, such as even projects aren't available. Uh, audit logs aren't available. Pieces uh, for admin platform aren't available. Templates aren't available users so here we can see users you could delete users right here uh, deactivate users edit user settings so here you can see brand anti uh, active pieces so you can't white label unfortunately um, and then API keys signing keys sign in single sign on and then license keys so pretty much all of that is um, not accessible but you do have AI here so this is pretty much the only thing you would want um, you can configure these different providers such as OpenAI, Anthropic, or Replicate. So here you would just put in your OpenAI API key right here, and that would help you, you know, when you're doing different things like creating um, workflows with AI and different things like that. All right, next, if we go back to our flows area, we can actually create folders to, cus uh, to you know, categorize our different flows. We can import flows and then we can do a new flow, for example. We can either do from scratch or from a specific template here. So we can see we got different templates such as write long SEO articles uh, by ChatGPT, um, a few different other ones here. We're going to dive into some of these uh, flow creations in just a second. But first, I'm going to actually show you how to get started with this on Coolify, which is probably where a lot of you will actually want to use this if you are going to be actually using active pieces. So if you're self-hosting it, you could use Docker Compose, like if you're not using Coolify for whatever reason, like if you just wanted to install it uh, directly on your VPS or however you want to do it, there's um, Docker Compose, um, as well as like you could check in the GitHub here and do it however you want. But like I said, we're going to do it the easy way with Coolify. If you're not familiar with Coolify, it's essentially an open source self-hostable Heroku, Netlify, and Vercel alternative. Simply put, you can just go to self-hosted right here copy this one command this curl command and run it in your vps when you're ssh into it and it will set up coolify on your uh, vps if, you if you're not familiar with coolify search josh pocock coolify on youtube check out some of my other coolify videos showing it how to install it get it set up are you tired of pouring thousands of dollars into appointment setters only to watch leads slip away imagine having a team of elite sales agents booking qualified appointments for you around the clock no more wasted time on training no more frustration with performance and no more draining your budget on inconsistent and expensive call centers introducing stride agents ai powered appointment setters that work 24 7 never get tired and book appointments while you sleep Trained on thousands of successful conversations, our AI agents outperform human teams at just one-tenth of the cost. Join the ranks of businesses that doubled their appointments and booking rates in just a matter of weeks. Don't get left behind in the AI revolution. Visit strideagents.com now and transform your entire sales process with cutting-edge AI technology. It's time to accelerate your stride with AI agents. 
Once you have that set up, you're going to go back over to your Coolify and you're going to create a new project. I'll just call it APs and then click continue. And then you're going to click on production and we're going to add a new resource. Now, one of the good things about using it on Coolify is we actually don't even need to. Now, we actually don't need to. I mean, if you're familiar with some of my other videos where we self host things with Coolify, lots of times you'll either have to change the Docker Compose file and then use a public repository right here. But with Coolify, we can actually just scroll right down. And you'll see under their services, we actually have active pieces right here. So we can go ahead and just simply click on active pieces. All right, so Coolify pretty much simplifies this whole process for you. Um, all you're really going to have to do is point a subdomain at your Coolify IP address. Let's say it is active pieces, um, you know, dot your domain dot com or however you want to do it. And then you're just going to come over here into settings under active pieces. And you would just put your domain that you point right here. So if it's HTTPS, you know, blah, 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 dot your domain, whatever, dot com, you would put that here and then click on save. Okay. Once you do that, you could go over to environment variables and just verify that, you know, that domain is showing right here under service F U D N active pieces. It should automatically show right here. If it isn't, you could just go into developer view and then change it and then save it. But it should already shown uh, automatically once you change it over in the other setting and then you simply would just click on deploy all right so that's going to pull all the docker images and containers and that's going to spin that up it could take a little bit a couple minutes once that's done you can actually go to the domain that you inputted there and it should load up active pieces the same way it did on your local host now that we're here let's actually take a look at the flow builder so let's go ahead and use a template and we can go ahead and just click on this one for example translate rss with chat gpt and tweet it all right, so that is going to load up the flow builder as we can see here and it looks somewhat similar to zapier as you can see we got the different nodes or pieces right here and they're going in a downwards direction right here if we click on each individual one we can see here we got the rss feed url here we got chat gpt where we could input our api key all right so i just selected the model right here as gpt 4.0 we can see our question right here as you can see, we're using these different variables from the RSS feed, such as the uh, new feed title, new feed summary right here. All right. And the way we get those is if we click in here, we can actually see the data selector. So we could make this bigger. I'm going to keep it smaller right here. Um, and we can see we got the new feed stuff right here that we could once we actually, you know, ran this trigger or test it, we could actually go ahead and drag these over here. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on load sample data right here. And it's going to load that as we can see the result is successful right here for this sample data now i'm going to click on test flow right here and we can see here that it is pulling the rss feed which went through and now it went through the chat gpt right here which is a success as well on the left hand side we can see the run details so if i click here we can see information from the rss feed click here i can see information from the chat gpt all right and we can see what our prompt was so translate the following news title to chinese include one or two emojis in the output and make it in the form of a tweet don't include the links to the tweet blah blah blah, blah. you can see that and here is the output we got chinese letters and then two emojis right here if i go back over to the rss feed we can see that the information right here was about a volcanic eruption blah 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 so that is what it actually used all right if you go up here to support you can see that active pieces does have a community here so if you are using this i would encourage you to um you know look here in the form for different questions and whatnot if you get stuck runs will show you your run logs versions will show you your different version history which is nice because you can go ahead and either you know view this or use it as a draft all right i actually published this flow but if you want to edit it again you can just click on edit flow right here you can toggle it either on or off and then publish it again if if need be up here you can click here to rename it move to a specific folder duplicate import export so if you wanted to export this so if you made everything on your local version then you wanted to export it into your coolify version you could do so you could also share it and all that good stuff all right guys of course you can make uh, much more advanced workflows here you got different things right here for universal ai like image ai text ai utility ai different ai providers right here you can integrate it with flowwise 11 labs etc we got core features such as code you can run code like node.js typescript code with with npm we got connections crypto csv file helpers smtp storage 
bunch of different stuff we got apps here a bunch of different apps you can see all right guys so that's pretty much the gist of active pieces now what is my actual conclusion on this after trying you know all the different automation tools that we've covered on this channel such as nnn dapier make.com you know kestra um, i would say that active pieces is more of just an alternative for something like zapier you know it's an open source alternative for zapier now it seems like their license is similar to kind of how like nan is where they have certain features um cut off like you know only for their enterprise so those parts aren't open source but um for the most part it's more open source and free than something like zapier you know which you're going to be paying a lot for and it does have some pretty cool features for ai and some more advanced features now i'm not 100 percent sure but just from the feel that i get from it already i wouldn't say it's as versatile and capable of some you know maybe advanced things you know it probably is capable of it but something like make.com probably I don't know it just feels like it you know you have a little bit more options but i don't know you know i i didn't fully build out complex workflows with this so i'd have to see in action i built out complex workflows with make.com as well as n8n so I, I definitely wouldn't say that this is um you know i say if you're a beginner and you want something easy you know maybe if you're used to zapier and you want an open source free alternative this is definitely a great fit if you're already very proficient with n8n probably would most likely stick to that for majority of the time but i think this could still have a piece in your specific tech stack depending on what you know your use cases are and then kestra is definitely just a lot more advanced than something like this so i wouldn't really compare the two this is more on along the lines of something like a zapier um so other than that guys hope you got some value from this video let me know what your thoughts are about active pieces down below if you use it before maybe you like it maybe you have a better alternative maybe you're all in on n8n i definitely am still going to be using n8n as well as kestra and um yeah i really like those tools but i still will give active pieces a try and see if i can use it for potential things other than that guys if you're new to the channel we upload videos every single day on ai automation marketing sales business growth so if you like that type of content and you got some value here make sure to like this video comment down below and subscribe to stay up to date with the daily uploads if you guys haven't already joined our free community strivecommunity.com i'll leave a link down below to our free facebook group and discord channel so you can network and connect with like-minded individuals as well as myself thank you guys so much we just hit 12,000 subscribers literally today so i really appreciate all the support road to 20k on the way and then for those of you who run a business and you need help automating your business whether it's your systems your operations your marketing running paid traffic or even implementing ai ai agents like ai appointment setters ai cold callers ai call center into your business to nurture your leads book more appointments qualify your leads and check out the first link in the description down below executivestride.com forward slash apply to book a call with myself and my team and we can see if it's a good fit or not other than that guys i will see you in tomorrow's video Keep hustling, keep grinding, and of course, guys, accelerate your stride. Take care.